can see. So we can see here's Castile and Galicia. So Galicia considers this to be one of her core provinces. So this country may be created from this province or appear as a new country if the revolt grows strong enough. So Galicia could be could tear itself away from us if we leave rebels there for long enough. Um, if we lose a war, a country could force it upon us, force Galicia to uh, leave us. Um, generally speaking, though, um, if you need to reduce your infamy fast, because I remember if you go over 35, it's it's really, really bad. If you really need to reduce infamy, you can just release a, uh, a vassal, um, something that has that you have cores on. Um, so, yeah, that's it. So I can see I can click here, they will receive one province, so rather not, obviously. Um, okay, so this is our court. Uh, right now we can see we uh, King Enrique III, the Transtamara. Uh, what's more important here is the de Transtamara, this is his dynasty. Um, later on we can actually expand our dynasty through uh, royal marriages, through personal unions, um, it's not as important as in Crusader Kings 2, obviously, because by now states have started to become more and more centralized, but um, it's just good to uh, keep an eye on, I guess for fun, mostly. Um, so on monarch death, a Castilian noble will succeed to the throne because we have no legal heir. Uh, we'll actually go through um, a different period, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, we can see each um, king is rated on um, on a scale of up to uh, a skill of up to nine, I believe, um, uh, for administration, diplomacy, and military. Each of these have different effects. So because we have administration of six, administration skill six, we have decreased building costs, um, increased monthly stability, decreased merchant cost, increased merchant chance. I'll talk about all these merchant stuff later on. Colonist chances increased. So uh, you want a king with a strong administration if you want to focus on these things, on like trade, production, and government. Um, diplomacy is important. Um, it depends on how many diplomats we get per year, as we can see over here. We hover over the, the diplomats. We can see our current ruler is giving us plus 0.15. 1.5. It decreases maximum war exhaustion, spy efficiency, uh, decreases infamy. So diplomacy is also very important, especially if you want to reduce um, infamy. Um, but also, um, just uh, diplomatic skill will also help you conduct better relations with other countries. Um, and then finally, military. Obviously, you want to have a very strong military leader if you're going to be conducting a lot of wars because this increases the morale of our armies and navies and increases the technology for land and naval. Um, generally speaking, uh, if we overthrow our monarchy and we have a republic instead, we'll be able to actually choose. Um, like currently I'm playing a game as the Dutch, so I, I overthrew my uh, monarchy and I now every, I think, four years, five years, I have the option of either choosing him again or choosing a bureaucratic, a diplomatic, or military leader. By the way, when I mean bureaucratic, it just means administrative leader. And he'll excel at more at one job or the other. Um, but for now, because we're a feudal monarchy, it all depends on who our legal heir is to the throne. Okay, so that's that. Um, great men of the court. These are the people who will kind of help make up for the shortcomings of your state in one way or another. You can hire three of them. So let's click right now. Um, so right now these are all different types of um, great people. Uh, if you're new to this game, which I'm sure many of you are, uh, you probably won't know what each one of these guys does. Just But just take time to look through each of them. Um, they all have lots of different uh, advantages um, and disadvantages. Uh, well, not disadvantages, they all have advantages. But, um, for example, we could hire this guy, Philip Campatamos. Uh, he increases our spy efficiency, uh, how likely we are to succeed at a spy mission, by 8%. He's a 4 star, it goes up to 6 stars. 6 stars is the best you can have. Uh, but because he's more stars, he's going to cost more. He's going to cost us 12. So it'll cost us 12 to our treasury. Um, uh, it's, and it also costs us monthly. 
So it's going to cost us 0.4 monthly to hire Philippe Campan Moss. Um, obviously, he's not active because we haven't hired him, and he's born in Castile. If we hire if we hire advisors from other countries, he's going to be more expensive. So if you're trying to save money, uh, hire uh, people from your court, from from your country, born in Castile. Also, these people can be bought out by um, uh, bought out by uh, by other countries. So, for example, if France wants to get Philippe Campamos, they will pay me twelve dollars for him, which is really great. So, having good advisors is another way of actually kind of making short-term cash. It's actually helped me a lot. Um, so, for now, I'm going to select some. Um, uh, just quickly, so we don't waste any time, I'm going to pick um, I'm going to pick Pedro uh, de la Sueva. He's going to help our compete chance, our merchants, so they have a greater chance of succeeding in the market. So all I have to do is click on him. Uh, so do you want to wish to um, do you wish to recruit him? It's going to cost us twelve. So we can see up here 191 ducats. Okay, so we lost our our twelve dollars, and we have him now. And from now on, um, if I go here to Andalusia, our compete chance has increased. I don't know actually where to see it off the top of my head, but um, but it's increased. Our compete chance has now increased. Um, we can go see. Um, oh, who else do we want? Um, Uh, let's get Diego de Ojeda, which increases our he he'll increase our prestige by one point five percent. Or actually no, we're gonna get uh, Nuno Pimentel. He increases our land tech investment, so he'll get let, help us get better um, people. And lastly, usually you can just pick from anyone here, but I'd like get, going and getting, and I'll talk about this later more. Um, uh, Master of the Mint. They all have names, by the way. So I got a arm, um, a uh, an army, an army reformer, and a uh, trader. So I'm also going to get master of mint because this is going to help us with our inflation. Um, actually, as a general rule, I mean not a rule, but as advice, a tip, I suppose. Um, okay, so I got a level two guy. Uh, as a general, uh, it's good to get a master of mint at the beginning of the game. Um, so I'm going to hire him now, and I'll talk about what that does. He's down here. See, he's hired. We got him from the other screen, which I'll talk about more later. So hire him, and now he's going to help us reduce our inflation. Um, okay, moving on. Next is economy. Um, yeah, so as someone is saying in the uh, chat, uh, yes, it is in the ledger, which I'll talk about later. That shows us all the information about our country and about other people's countries as well. Anyway, economy right now. Um, this is probably the screen you're going to spend the most time on, like adjusting, fixing, screaming at your computer about. I mean, it can get a bit frustrating, especially at the beginning of the game, but that's all part of the challenge of this game, because even when I'm really upset it's actually a lot of fun cuz i mean i mean you don't have this in any other game like you have to have so much control over it except perhaps in victoria 2 which is another paradox game um, but anyway at the top up here we can see monthly income uh, monthly income uh, is how much money we're getting from tax production trade income uh, tariffs so tax is basically uh, is basically your people tax, your poll tax. Uh, so each people, uh, so all your people, all together, they pay 15.5. And this is paid at the end of the year. So we're going to get a nice lump sum of that at the end of the year. Uh, production, um, uh, 2.8. Uh, trade income, 1.0. Gold income, 5.5. Uh, gold income, Basically, because gold is not uh, a uh, it's not a commodity which is trade traded uh, globally, uh, you, you basically goes directly to your income. So I'm currently making it in um, in uh, Toledo. Where else am I making gold? Gold is a very valuable product. Toledo is making it. Um, Austria has a lot of gold provinces. 
um, also up here in Georgia, we can see up here Kartli. It's very good for the Ottomans to take early on. Uh, gold is very, it's like, I would say, the best commodity you can get because um, it goes directly into your income and doesn't matter on uh, price fluctuations over time. Um, so that's very good. So we're getting 5.5 from that. Um, production is basically, as you can see here, we're making grain in Salamanca. So the production of that, of making this product, and I suppose selling it and everything, is what we're getting um, in this total lump sum of 2.8. Um, over time, um, our efficiency will increase. So right now we're not getting 100% of our production income. So as we're able to tax it better and everything, we'll be able to increase that efficiency and we'll be able to get more from that amount. Um, trade income is just one. So right now from our merchants, this is just the beginning of the game. If I start the game, it'll change. Um, uh, but trade income is something that can dramatically be much larger than tax and production. I, I was talking about my Dutch game earlier. Um, I'm creating, I'm getting like 200 gold from trade. Trade is such an important part of this game and can really help you balance the budgets. Um, uh, so always keep that in mind. Trade is very, very important. Uh, so I, told, I talked about gold income. You get it directly from your provinces that produce gold. Um, Tariffs, um, uh, oh, someone's asking about gold messes with inflation. When I get to inflation, I'm going to talk about that, but uh, yes, it does. Um, tariffs are only from um, provinces that you would consider to be colonies that are not part of your continent. Um, so instead of, uh, for example, if I conquered Tangiers, if you, if you remember, I went back to the region map mode. This is all Europe, right? So, but here is North Africa, which is, which is an entirely different continent. And when I discover North America as well, I will only, I won't get tax. Instead, I'll get tariffs, um, from, whoops, tariffs. So right now, I only have it in Europe, so I'm getting zero. But instead of, uh, tax, you get tariffs. So right now, that's zero percent. Also, it's important to know to get maximum, like your hundred percent amount of tariffs, um, you need ships. So right now I have zero overseas provinces, but I have 11 ships. So you want to have as many ships as you do overseas provinces. So if I have 15 overseas provinces, for example, but only 11 ships, my tariffs are going to decrease because basically it's not, they're not being protected. That's the idea. So because you're not able to protect your uh, overseas provinces with enough ships, uh, you're going to have decreased uh, tariffs. So always make sure you have more ships or the same amount of ships as you do overseas provinces. This percentage here, as we can see, um, is how much of the income it makes up um, a yearly. So our tax makes up 110%, which might not make sense, but that's because we make, uh, we make some monthly and then we get a large lump sum at the end yearly. So it goes, so it's a much, it's very important, your tax. So always make sure to keep your population growing. Um, production is a bit less, 26. Trade income is less as well. But of course, as I said, trade income can, can become much larger part of your income. And just basically means the percentage it depends on. Um, so, yeah. So we can see the total amount of all this is 24.8. If you want to see a breakdown, you can see tax. So from taxation, it's 9.6. That's actually directly from your population. Harbor fees um, is 1.75 and tolls are 4.17. Uh, the reason we're getting these is because we have a center of trade. So the center of trade allows us to, um, uh, as there's more merchants in Andalusia in our center of trade here, uh, we'll be able to tax uh, people that are coming in here. Um, this is just another tip, going aside from the tutorial right now. Uh, it's kind of uh, a part of a part of the game. If you're playing as like Holland or France, and you're trading in uh, Lubeck, Lubeck up here as part of the Hansa, uh, going be, trading through here, you're gonna have to pay a certain amount of gold to go through uh, a sound toll, basically. I believe it's the same with the Ottomans. Um, if the Ottomans control both straits of the Sea of Marmara, if you want to conduct trade in, let's say, um, if there was a trade center here, you would have to pay money to go through there. So that's just 
part of an additional event, part of the game. Um, going back, uh, 